This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. And let the Redeemer of the Lord say it so. Amen. God bless you. Happy New Year to you as we come to the end of the month of January. We just want to give honor to God who is first and foremost in my life. To my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To my wife, Pastor Anderson. And to the live viewing audience. We just want to truly thank God for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice, beloved, and we shall be glad in it. And let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. I want to thank God just for another opportunity to serve Him. Thank God we were at church on this morning, and we had a wonderful time. So we thank God that we were able to come back this evening and give you our evening manner. Amen. But before we get into the word of the Lord on this evening, I have a word that God has laid in my heart. It's taken from the book of St. Mark. Mark was not one of the original apostles or disciples of Christ. Mark was John, John um, Barnabas' nephew. And also Mark was a Gentile. But he had given his heart to the Lord. It's in St. Mark chapter in the 17th verse. But before we go into the word of the Lord on this evening, just let us follow our hearts in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, for your word that does the upright good in the heart. And as we attempt to give your word on this evening, speak to our hearts. Speak to the hearts of those who will hear your word today. Bound the hand of the enemy that would try to disrupt your word from going out over the airwaves. Let someone who hear your word today cry out, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we're living in the last and evil days, perilous times. Apostle Paul said, will come and men will be lovers of their own selves, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And dear God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, don't let us get caught up in this hour of temptation, but protect us and keep us covered in your blood. For we ask these blessings in Christ's name and for his grace. We pray, let the church say amen. It was a song singing in my heart. I won't complain. I'm not going to sing it. My voice been a little rasped for the last few weeks. I've been getting some dental work done. Um, so I won't be doing so much smiling anyway. But um, the song said, I won't complain. I had some good days and I had some lonely nights. You know, and sometimes it felt like the whole world was on your shoulder. But the songwriter says that I won't complain. It was complaining and murmuring that kept the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years. Because instead of coming out and being thankful unto God, like the psalmist declared, how God brought them out of Egypt, they murmured and complained in so much so that they vexed the heart of the man of God, Moses, wherein he could not go into the natural promised land, but God allowed him to go into the spiritual promised land. He was only able to see it, but they vexed him so much because of their murmuring, murmuring and complaining. God hates it when we murmur and complain. Instead of looking at the cup being half empty, look at the cup being half filled. Then ask God, Lord, God, fill my cup until I have an overflow. Help me to be thankful for that which you have done, that which you are doing, and for that which you're going to do. And as praises go up, beloveds, regardless of your situation that's in your life, deliverance will come down. If you don't believe me, ask Paul and Silas, who was locked up in jail for preaching the word of God, for casting out the spirit of divination out of that young damsel. Bible says at midnight, they begin to sing songs and praise unto God. And God sent the earthquake and loosed their shackles, open up the prison doors. Because as praises go up, your deliverance come down. So the songwriter says, I won't complain, even though you may have justifications to complain. The Bible says, just what Job said, the Lord gives, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
shall we only receive good from the hand of God and not evil. So it rains on the just as well as the, un as well as the unjust. But when it rains on us, beloveds, we have an umbrella. We are under the shadow of the almighty wing. He can hide us under the wings from the storms and the vicissitudes of this life. That's just a part of my testimony that was singing in my spirit today. God, I won't complain. But in everything we will give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus that concerns you and that concerns me. Now in the book of St. Mark, the 16th chapter, it reads like this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, in the name of Jesus, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. The 18th verse says, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything, any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. But you don't tempt God when you drink something to drink something daily on purpose. But if you drink it and you don't know what God is his word said, it will not hurt you. Then it says, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So we thank God just for the reading of his word. So the Bible let us to know, beloved, that God has, give us, has given the church signs on the power that he has given unto us, beloved. Now, if you go to the book of St. Matthew, the 23rd chapter, 24th chapter, the third verse, it reads like this. Signs and wonders, beloved, will follow them that believe. These are the signs, speaking with new tongues. We speak with tongues. Why aren't we casting out devils? Because we don't believe in the signs. The Bible says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And God will give us the power over the forces of darkness. My wife and I, we've been studying in our prayer night from the sixth chapter of Ephesians, how the Paul said you have to put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to fight against the wiles of the enemy. Because we don't wrestle against each other, flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, in high places. This is where the fight is at. It's a spiritual fight, beloved. But you have to put on the whole arm of God. In St. Matthew 24 and 3, and as he sat talking about Jesus upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming, your second return, and the end of the world. So God has given us signs in the 24th chapter of St. Matthews of his second return. And we know that those signs are that the Bible said there would be many false prophets. He said that, the, that there would be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes. Look at the world today, climate change. Floods, the, the glaciers are, 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 are melting. The earth is crying out. There's climate change. There will be pestilence. We had the COVID. We had the RSV. We have different diseases that we're even afraid now to even shake hands with people. Well, if a person coughs, we're wondering, do they have it? As I first said, for the last week or so, I had some type of rapture. You know, but those are the signs of the end time. I thank God that the psalmist said that none of these things shall come now thee. God will protect us even in the midst of pestilence. Then he said there will be earthquakes in diverse places. Wars and rumors of wars. You got a war going on in the Middle East. You have a war going on. In, um, in Europe with the Ukrainians and the Russians. And you have another war that's going on that people don't talk about in Hades. 
how they assassinated the president of Haiti and how gangs are ruling that country now. They were the self-sustained nation of black people. They wasn't part of the United States, but they were self-sustained until they, the president got assassinated. Now gangs are running that country. But these are the signs, and he said there would be many false crises. And if it was possible, they would even deceive the very elect. These are the signs of the end time. And we have to pay attention to what's going on around us. Sometimes you hear the politicians and the newscaster saying this, the world is on fire because these are the last and evil days. Then he said in his word that the love of many will wax cold. Lord, show us the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. This world is going to be cremated with the cremating, going to be destroyed with the cremating fires of the judges of Christ. Because Jesus said there's going to be a new Jerusalem. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. This is why he tells us in the book of St. Matthew, that fifth chapter, that the meek shall inherit the earth. But these are the signs. And he said, the love of many shall wax cold. How mother will be against daughters and fathers will be against sons. These are the times that we're living in. We're living in the times that men are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Even when you go to the house of God, many people don't go just to hear the word. They go to be, to be entertained. But these are the signs that we ought to be looking out for. In Matthew 12 and 38, it says, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see from thee a sign. We want to see a sign from you. We would see a sign from thee. In the 39th verse of the 12th chapter of St. Matthew, Jesus said this, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation, they seek after sign, and there shall no sign be given to it. But this is a sign that you're going to see. But the sign of the prophet Jonas for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. Now listen, beloveds. Jesus gave us the sign over 2,000 years ago that he would be crucified. And as, as Jonah was in the belly of the well, didn't say a great fish like we try to say, we try to say in our logic that a well couldn't swallow a man. But God, the Bible says in the book of Jonah, God prepared that fish. And Jesus is telling you what type of fish it was. It was a whale's belly that the Lord has prepared. And he said the sign of the end times, the dispensation of grace, the dispensation of the Gentiles, because that's who Paul was able to minister to, to the Gentiles. Would be, he would be in the grave three days and three nights, even as Jonah was in the belly of this well. So these are the times that we're living in, beloved. Lord, show us a sign. He was in the heart of the earth, Christ Jesus, when they crucified him. Three days. The Bible says that he was in a bar tomb, the tomb of jo Joseph of Arimathea. But the tomb was only bar because Jesus would not stay in that tomb. He went down into the lower plains. He led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He rose from the grave saying, O grave, where is your victory? And O death, where is your sting? So when we as believers die, we sleep away in the, in, in the Lord. For to be absent in the Lord is to be present with the Lord. Signs of the time, beloveds. You have, to, you have to be blind and not understand that we're living in the last and evil days. But this is one thing. A lot of people are blind because the prince of this world, which is Lucifer, he has blinded the eyes and the hearts of the people that they would not believe the truth. The Bible said that they rather believe a lie rather than the truth. They have tinkly ears to hear lies and conspiracy theories, but they don't want to know the truth of God's word. So the signs of the time, we're living in a society, in a society today with, with, with many signs. We have 
in our everyday life. It helps to navigate us through the vicissitudes of this, of this life that we live in. We need a sign. Lord God, show me a sign of your coming and of the end of the world. These signs that, the, that we have, even in the natural, they are critical for our safety, for our protection, even for our survival. And this will happen, beloveds. When signs are not heeded or given heed to, it can be detrimental to your well-being and even lead to serious injuries and even death. The truth be told, these signs, the world, without these signs, without the signs that we had, I'm going to discuss some of the signs. The world would be in total chaos, like the temptations used to sing some of the song. It would be a ball of confusion. If we obey these signs, it could be just the thing that saved your life. And the sign that I want to talk about is in the 12th chapter of the book of St. John, the beloved disciple, in the 32nd verse. Jesus said that he was the sign, beloved. And this is, this is St. John 12 and 32. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, that I will draw all men unto myself. His death was a sign that God was opening up a new and living way. Matter of fact, the Bible says how the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Not from the bottom to the top, but from the top to the bottom, opening up a new and living way. The sign of his death on, the Cal on Calvary's cross, we took communion today, beloveds, was his death. His death was the sacrifice, the Passover land, the Paschal land. He died for the sins of this world. The Bible says that God so loved the world, St. John 3.16, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Should not perish, beloved. If you believe on him, like the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Why you say should not perish? Because the devil believed and he trembled. Trim See, you just don't want to be a hearer of God's word, but you want to be a doer also. So these are the signs. Jesus' sign was his death on the cross. And his other side was, he appeared to Mary at the tomb early Sunday morning. When they saw him, they thought he was a gardener. And when he cried, when he said her name, Mary, it came to her mind, this is Jesus. She said, Rabona. And she went to touch him. He said, touch me not, because I have not yet ascended to my father. And your father to my God and your my God. But go tell Peter, my disciples, and Peter to meet me in Galilee. So that was the sign of his resurrection. But everyone don't be, doesn't believe the signs. When she went and told the, the apostles that she had seen the Lord, the Bible said they didn't believe her. They jumped out because they was hidden behind the doors from the Roman soldier. They was hiding. And they ran to the tomb, and they had seen for themselves his garments was, was, was there, but he wasn't there. And even when Mary went to the tomb, the angels met him and said, Why seek ye the living amongst the why seek ye the living amongst the dead? He is not here, but he has he is risen as he said. Life, if we obey the signs of Jesus' death. He come to give us life, beloved, and that more abundantly. But if we don't believe in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, we choose death. This is why the Bible says this, beloved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. They that don't believe, they that believe are not condemned, but they that don't believe are condemned already because they do not believe in the life of the Son of God. Because men love darkness rather than life. Repercussions, beloved. There's always repercussions. There are, there's always a penalty when you don't obey the signs that God has given us, especially of his Son. Whenever we choose to break the laws of God, this is what a sign is. A sign is simply a law. You just don't put up signs just to be putting them up. I mean, on your private property, you can do whatever you want. But in the public, you just can't go around putting up signs. If you got a stop sign there, it, it, it's, it's, it's a law that you must obey this sign. This, this sign, this law. And if you break this law, if you, go, if you don't obey the sign, there's repercussions for it. Signs are laws, beloveds. And when we break the laws of God and man, we must suffer the consequences and the penalties for breaking them, them laws. We have stop signs as a warning to stop your movement. And this is what Jesus said. Warn the sinners that they sin not. Warn the righteous that they don't sin. Let the wicked forsake his, forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And God will abundantly pardon. So when we see the stop sign in the natural, you just can't run a stop sign. If you run a stop sign, because I said that sign is a law. And God has given us his law in the Ten Commandments. He has given us his law when Jesus told the disciples that upon these two laws rest the whole commandments of God. These two laws, that we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. These are signs. So when you see the stop sign, if you run through it, you can have a car accident, you can hurt somebody, so you must obey the signs. The, the, the sign. Even years ago, my dad took me to get uh, my driver's license on Belmont Avenue in Philadelphia. Back then, you had to go to the police barracks in order to um, get your driver's license. I had my permit at that time, and I had my license at the age of 16. But when you came to that stop sign, you had to stop. And if you stopped and kept, if you partially stopped, they call that a rolling stop. They will automatically fail you because you didn't come to a complete stop. Stop. God is telling us to stop sinning. And most of the times, when you see the signs in the and the um, icons, it's with a hand. Or you see the, 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 the parking, the crossing guards, they have up their side, they have their hand out. Stop! Stop sinning! I stop sinning, I enjoy doing what I'm doing. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So stop! You have to be obedient to the signs that we're living in the signs of the time. Lord, show us your sign. Show us a sign of your coming and of the end of the world. Don't take from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is what God told Adam and Eve. Stop. What You see that tree? It's a beautiful tree. It has fruit on it. It can make one wise. It can make one to know good and evil, but that tree, if you eat of it, stop. You shall surely die. Your fellowship, your relationship with me will end. Instead of living throughout eternity, you will live so many years and you will die. And there's another sign that the God has given us in a natural I take the natural to let us know about the heavenly, what God requires of us. Another sign is a yielded sign. And these signs, a yielded sign is, is for us to beware of oncoming traffic. The Bible said we ought to watch as well as pray. 
Paul said this. He said, I'm not ignorant of concerning the devil's devices. The songwriter all the time sing this song, yielding to temptation because yielding to sin. If you play with fire, you will get burned. It's just a matter of time. But when you see the yield sign in the natural, if you're a driver, it lets you know to beware of oncoming traffic. Be prepared to stop. Slow down. Don't tempt yourself. The Bible says how God don't tempt us with evil, but the enemy comes to tempt us. He wants us to yield to temptation. Don't yield to temptation. I thank God for his word. For the Bible says there is no temptation that's common unto man that the Lord have not made a way of escape. He already made a way for us to escape, beloveds. But if you play with fire, you will get burned each and every time. Case in point, you realize that you had a problem with pornography? You shouldn't be on the Internet. <laughs> you, had, you have a problem with lust and you're a married man? Or a married woman, you shouldn't be have be going out with single people because you have that lustful spirit, and before you know it, you may yield yourself to temptation. But that's what the yield sign is. Slow down. Take a retrospective view of what's going on around you. When you think about yielding to temptation, if I do this, will it will it damn me? Will it destroy my relationship with God? Will it destroy my career? Will I lose my job? So yielding is, is letting you know to be aware of what's going on in your surrounding. Consider others. And don't always be about me, myself, and I. Yield not to temptation, beloved, so the enemy. That's what he wants you to do. Because yielding is sin. And this is what the devil can only tempt you with what you already desire. He can't tempt, he can't, let me tell you this. I'm allergic to seafood, shellfish, things of that sort. I guess I would have to be on videos in order for me to eat a shrimp or any shellfish. You can't tempt me with that. So the devil is, only, is going to only tempt you with what he knows you desire. How do I resist temptation? I'm glad you asked that question. The Bible says Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He was in the wilderness. And the Bible said when he, after his fast, he was hungry. The devil knew he was hungry because he was in the flesh. He was very godly and very manly. His flesh got hungry. So the, the devil said to Jesus, tempted him, if you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. How do you overcome temptation? Jesus said, is it written? It's written. It's written. It's written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth outside of God. You, you combat and able to conquer the enemy with the word of God. Yeah, the temptation was great. The temptation was great. I'm hungry. I've been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. But I'm going to choose to obey God's word and not to show off or listen to the, to the enemy. See, that's what happened to Eve. She was beguiled by the enemy because she yielded to the temptation that he presented to her. The tree was a beautiful tree. It was a tree with great fruit. It was a tree that make one wise. It was the tree that the devil lied to and said, make you become as God, knowing good and evil. And she yielded to those temptations. But the Bible tells us this, beloveds, that if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. If he know that he can me with shellfish. He's not going to tempt me with shellfish. He's going to try to catch me with fried chicken or something that I like, something that you like. The other sign that we want to deal with, beloved, is caution signs. Giving us a caution sign to warn us. 
And sometimes, like, we were firemen and we had put up the caution banner because we were in there working and it was danger in that area, so you had to put up a caution sign. And when I was a street repair supervisor, we had to put up caution signs and barricades to let people know that if you go past these signs, these banners, these caution banners, you could get hurt. So caution sign is to proceed, is to let us to know below, be with, 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 with cautious, and to be careful, to be alert of your surroundings. Know the enemy that you're fighting with. Every door that opens is not a, is, is not a door that God is opening. Every door that God closes is not a door that God closes. Some, any door that closes to you, be, any door that opens to you first, be a door that God opens unto you. So the, you have to be cautious. Lord God, do you want me to go through that door? Is this of you, Lord? The Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit to see whether it be of God or not. And sometimes doors close and we we'll be trying, trying to open that door. And God doesn't want us to open that door. So we have to be cautious. Sometimes people come into your life and they leave and we try everything in our power to hold on to that person. But God is allowing that person to leave because that person could be toxic to you. I remember my bishop, Bishop Hunter, preached that one time. Toxicity. Some people in your life, God don't want them in your life no more. When God called Abraham out of earth, he said, leave your family, leave your nation, leave, leave, leave the, these adulterated people who serve in idols. Willing to leave these people, I can I can take you to your to your destiny to serve the true living God. When God give us the cautious sign, you have to be careful who you hook up with. This is what the Bible says, beloved. How can two walk together unless they be in agreement? How can sweet water and bitter water come out of the same? If it does, how can cold and hot water come out of the same fountain? If it does, now it becomes lukewarm. And if you lukewarm, God says, I'll spit you out of my mouth. But I said this to say, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? I'm saved and you unsaved. But you want, I, want you, I want to marry you. I'm going to get you converted. You ain't going to do nothing. If God didn't call him, it's nothing that you could do to get that person to Receive Christ in their person and their life as their personal savior. The Bible says you can't walk with God and walk with the world. You have to make up your mind, like Joshua said. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know what you're going to do. Serve the gods what God brought you out of the wilderness, or you can serve the God in the land that we conquered. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve God, Jehovah. I'm going to serve Elohim. I'm going to serve the one who served, who, who brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. So the cautious sign is to perceive with caution, to be careful and alert of your surrounding. The Bible says, "Be don't be anxious for nothing. Oh, this is one in a lifetime opportunity. That's a one in a lifetime lie. If God want to open a door for you, he will. But he said, everything with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. Acknowledge God in all your ways, and God will. He will to direct your path. Yeah, prayer and supplication, make your request be made known unto God. And I make my request made on, known unto God, not because he doesn't know, but he requires for us to ask, lean not to your own understanding. He said, ask, knock, and seek. This is our responsibility. And God will open up that door of opportunity, whatever it is that, that, that you think you're lacking. He'll open it up to you. But you don't want to, I don't, I don't trust my own understanding. How can you trust your own understanding? If a, way, if a man's ways, the, the, the Proverbs say, is of the Lord, how can he understand his own ways? The Bible says, how the heaven is from the earth, that's how different God ways are from us. 
I can't figure God out unless God reveal himself unto us. Paul said, oh, that I might know him in the fellowship of his suffering, the powers of his resurrection, being made conformable to his death, his burial, his resurrection. If Paul, a, 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 a scholar in the law, wanted to know Jesus better, what about you and I? I can't lean to my own understanding. Sometimes you could be seen like you're bipolar. You're up and down. You're like the waves of the sea being tossed to and fro. Can't trust my own understanding. But in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge God. And God said that he will open up that door. door. All my ways, acknowledge him. And God said, I'm going to direct your path. I'm going to lead you beside the still waters. I'm going to allow you to lay down in green pastures. I'm going to pre prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I'm going to anoint your head with oil. Then the psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just be loved, like he says, in all your ways acknowledge him. When you open that door, that's what the court is telling me, open it slowly because you never know who's behind that door. When you close that door, close that door slowly because you never know what's going to happen. Have you ever been in, in a situation where you close your child's hand in the door because you closed it too fast? Instead of closing the door cautiously, you're looking around, seeing what's going on, making sure that child's hand is not in the door. So you ought to be cautious, beloved. Cautious is what you hear. The Bible says, they labor among you. Are they looking out for your soul? Or are they trying to prostitute you? Are, they, are you there for M&Ms, money and members? There's another sign that we want to talk about is the dead end sign. It's a dead end sign. It's a dead end street, beloved. And this sign, it indicates there's no way out playing the inner end. When you see a sign that says dead in the street, <laughs> I, I have seen <laughs> TV shows of people who was, who was trying to escape the authorities. The authorities is on hot pursuit on them, of them. And dead in the street. Are you going down a dead end street? If you're living in this world without Christ, you're, you're on a dead end street. The Bible lets us to know this, believer, that a man can think that he's right, but the end of his ways is death. I don't trust my right. I don't trust my ways. I trust the ways of God. I trust what God has spoken into my life because people change all the time. What was wrong and sinful 20 or 30 years ago it's acceptable today. Let everybody do their own thing. And this is how adultery can come in play. We leave landmark. We leave that, 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 that North Star. And we begin to go after others. And these other guys are leading us down dead end street. We're, and we're doing our own thing. We're not obeying the laws of the land. Just like what's going on in politics today. They know that they're wrong. They know that what certain people are doing is wrong, but they continue to follow that person down a dead end street. Why? For profit and for gain. And some of them are just, just blinded by social media, by news, news stations, continue to tell them lies, and they feed into them lies. And so much because if they wasn't feeding into the lives, the things that's going on in politics would not be going on today. The dead in the street, this sign Jesus warned us about in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. If you go down this dead in the street, there's no exit down in hell. Hell is a dead end. This is why he talked about the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus, this, this, this is so, this is so sad. This is so sad. When you talk about hell, somebody will tell you, well, you've never been there. If you believe God's word, Jesus tells us what hell is all about. Where the skin worm dies not and the fire is unquenchable. Then he gave us the
Lazarus and the rich man. How the rich man had a good life, how Lazarus had a bad life. The rich man did not care for the poor, but the dogs cared for the poor more than the rich man did. Because Lazarus was sick, had sores on his body, and he all he wanted was the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. And the rich man wouldn't give it to him. The dogs came, they looked at Lazarus, the poor man's sores. The Bible says how Lazarus died and he was carried by the angels to the bosom of Abraham, to the bosom of a comfort. The rich man eventually, he died. And the Bible says in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Years ago, I preached this, this sermon, a cool fool in a hot spot. Once he got there, that was that dead end. He couldn't get out. He tried to get out. He tried to negotiate with Abraham, saying that if you let me out, I can go with my brother, Jesus Christ. They don't believe the preaching from Bishop Anderson and from other preachers that's preaching the, the infallible, irrefutable word of God. They're not going to believe you, though you rose from the dead. Even when Jesus rose from the dead, the priests and the scribes, they paid the guards and said, tell the people that he didn't rise. Tell them that his disciples came and stole them. And when you and, and when a prisoner, he's dead, but when this corpse has been taken away, they're going to kill the guards. But he said, we, we're going to protect you, that they don't do you no harm. So even though he rose from the dead, the scribes and Pharisees did still, and the priests still not believe. Even the disciples, some of the disciples didn't believe. Thomas said, I'm not going to believe until I can see the prince in his hand and take my hand and thrust into his side. I'm not going to believe. Jesus had to come and make a man unto Thomas. That's why they call him down Thomas. He told the prince, take your hand and thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. But Jesus said, blessed are those who haven't seen and yet believe. So when the people tell you that there's no hell, they can't prove that it isn't. And they can't prove that it is. But Jesus said that there is. Who report will you believe? I choose to be believed the report of the Lord. Hell is a place of pleasure. The Bible says hell was not made for the for man, but hell was made for Lucifer and his angel. The Bible also says it talks about hell. The hell has the largest size. Prophets, the unbelievers, the sorcerers, the, the, the adulterers, the demons, they're going to be cast in hell. They're going to take hell and cast into the lake of fire. We're going to be high in brimstone. You don't hear that kind of preaching no more because they want people to think that after death, there's no responsibility. After death, beloved, there's the judgment. Either you're going to go to heaven with the Lord or you're going to go straight to hell. The choice is yours. But once in hell, you can't get out. So the rich man tried to con his way out of it, and Jesus said no. Every tongue has to stand on its own edge. Who report will you believe? But I will believe the report of the Lord. Once you get in, you can't turn around. There's no U-turns. There's no exits. There's no... There's no air conditioning down in hell. When you think of sign of it was the sign of the star in the east. They call it the star of David. That the wise men, they fall in order to find Jesus. So God is still giving us signs of the end time. Which star are you following today? Are you following the movie stars? You following the pops, the pop singers? Are you following the, the, the fallen star Lucifer? Or are you following Taylor Swift? What star rainbow? That's a sign. What is that rainbow? That rainbow is so beautiful. And what man tried to do is say at the end of the rainbow, you know, you're going to have a, a pot of gold. You know, it's a leprechaun. That's a lie. That rainbow was placed there by, by God as a sign for him to remember. Not to destroy this evil world by, by water no more, but it's going to be destroyed by the cremating the fire of the judgment. That's why God put that sign there. Lord, show us a sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Nations shall rise against nation. There's going to be famine in the land. There's going to be the love of many will wax cold. Parents will be against children, children against parents. 
Two be in the field, one going to be taken out the left. Two be grinding at the wheel, one be taken out the left. Two be in bed, one be taken out the left. Don't be at the five foolish versions. You're going through the you're going through the through the uh, calisthenics of religion. You have a form of godliness, but you have no power. The resurrection power, power that's going to raise you from the dead. So the sign of the covenant that God made with Abraham, they call it the nomadic covenant, where God told us to be fruitful and multiply, to replenish the earth. And eight souls were saved, beloved. It's just eight souls. Because every one of us wasn't aware of the sign. And the first sign that God told him, Noah built that ark. About 120 years he preached the word that it was going to rain. They never seen rain come from the sky, but the rain used to come up from the ground. But they did not believe in the preaching of Noah until the day that the flood came. God got all the animals, two of every kind. Noah and his, and his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Eight souls got on the, got on the ark, the size of an ocean cruiser. And the Bible said God locked the door. Then God gave the sign of the rainbow. That's the signs. In the book of St. Mark, it says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe in the signs of the end time? These are the times that we're living in. Beloved, you don't have time to pick flowers by the wayside. You just don't have time. You don't have time to hypocrite. You don't have time to think you, think you have time to eat and drink with the drunken that Jesus not come. They're going to mock you and say, where is he that said he was coming? He hasn't come yet. Then you begin to eat and drink with the drunkard and you lose your way. Follow the signs that Jesus talked about in the 24th chapter of St. Matthew's. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, in the name of Jesus, they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall speak with new tongues. And when we and when we then have the sign of the cross, and that sign indicates God's love, his eternal love for mankind by God giving his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world. He redeemed us from a curse of a broken law. We all live under some type of time. We talk about astrology. What sign are you? I, I tell you my sign. <laughs> my sign is that I've been born again. Born again by the incorruptible word of God. We make signs for love. You know how you make the sign for love and you make the sign for peace. And we have seen this sign lately. Have you ever seen this sign? They have identified this sign as a hate sign. And when you see our former president, he puts this up as a white supremacist hate sign. This is the sign of the cross. The sign that Jesus gives his disciples to identify his second return is the sign of Noah. There's going to be no commitment in marriage. Matter of fact, at the church today, the pastor spoke about marriage, how marriage is a commitment. It's a contract between you and your spouse and God that we're in this thing until death do our part. But the signs of the time, no marriage commitment. I'm not going to be committed to no to the, to the one woman. I got to have a lot of women. If Solomon have them, I can have them. If David have them, I can have them. If Joseph have them, I can have them. If Jacob have them, have them. They were under the law. The law made no man perfect. But Jesus said, For this call shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and them two shall become one. Moses permitted it because of the hardness of your heart. But from the beginning, it was not so. We're not under the law, but we're under grace. 
So sign one is no commitment to marriage. We're not committed to marriage. Sometimes people get uncommitted to marriage. They get uncommitted to their children. They get uncommitted to their responsibility in that marriage. Number two, men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They're going to have a form of godliness. These are the signs. Pay attention to the signs. Don't go past the signs. Yield to the yield sign. Be aware of the cautious sign. And please don't go down the dead end street. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The Bible says from such turn away. There's going to be vast construction where they're going to be building. They're going to be married and giving them marriage. The, the number four is the love of many is going to wax cold. Number five, there's going to be wars and rumors of war. When you look at what's going on in the House of Representatives, they don't even care what's going on in Israel because they're not going to fund it. They don't care what's going on in Ukraine or other parts of the world. They don't care if Russia take over. They don't care if China take over Taiwan. We're not going to give you unless you make concessions with the border. They say, okay, we'll make concessions. Then this other guy, the, the former president, said, don't make, don't make no deal with these guys. Keep the confusion. It's a ball of confusion. The world is on fire. fire. These are the times that we're living in. There's going to be many false prophets professing they are Christ. They're talking about Christ. Is the, they're saying Trump is the Messiah. He's a liar. He's a liar from the pit. So all he does is lie. He told over 3,000 lies when he was in house. And he continued to lie. And people would rather believe a lie than the, than the truth. Number seven, there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. These are so many signs that the Lord has given us that we won't be deceived by these false prophets. We as people, we need to take heed to the signs that God has given to man. I, myself, and my family, my wife, we have chosen to follow the sign of the cross in Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he that was resurrected on the third day by God his Father. This is the sign that he told Jonah that he would be in the earth three days, just like Jonah was in the well, three days and three nights. When God, God was down into Egypt land to deliver his people from slavery, he gave, he gave Pharaoh signs. He had to give Pharaoh ten signs in order to convince Pharaoh to let God's people go. They were in slavery. There was a Pharaoh that didn't know God, didn't know Joseph. So he took these people into slavery because he was afraid that they was so, 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 they was so being overpopulated that they would join the other armies and come against Israel. So they put them into slavery. And that's what the system does today. They call it um, redistricting so that you don't have a voice in, 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 in when it comes to voting, so that you don't have a voice when it comes to laws. And most of the laws, when they redistrict, they could when they redistrict a thing in their favor, they're doing it so that when they, so in the House of Representatives, they can make laws to affect your daily life, to give to the rich and to take from the poor. These are the times that we're living on. Can't you see the signs? Can't you see the handwriting on the wall? These are the last and evil days. I don't know how long this government can last. I know Biden said that we're fighting for democracy, but we ought to be fighting for right mm -hmm. and not for wrong. If democracy in this country is, is this what democracy is, where people can do whatever they want to do, that's not right in the outside of God. If democracy is that you can serve any God that you want to serve instead of serving the true God, because this country was supposed to be founded on the word of God. But we're living in a time where we talk about inclusion and everybody have rights and everybody should have rights. Everybody should be respected. But we live under one law and that's, that law is the law of God. It's not Jehovah, Je Elohim. That's the law that this, that this nation should live under. You go to, you go to one of um, Islamic countries, they live under the law of Allah, of Muhammad. You can't come in there and, 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 and break their laws. But in this country, anything goes. I can see God bringing this foolishness to an end. God would oft time remind Israel when they fell into, into adultery, 
God will remind them how he brought them out of the house of bondage. He had to remind them because soon, each generation, they will go right back into adultery, idol worshiping. God had to remind them, I brought you out of bondage, I brought you out of the rest. rest. I fed, I fed you a quill and manna and water. I gave you water in the wilderness. I gave you the, the land of the enemies, of the heathens. And as soon as you get you get following their gods, you follow God, you follow uh, Bay, Bay God, you follow Astaroth, you follow these false gods, gods who make their children walk to the fire. God said, I never required that of you. Even when God told Abraham to offer up his only son, God was doing it as an illustration that this is what he was going to do 40 and two generations later with his son. His son would be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. God had a sacrifice for Abraham. He had a ram caught in a bush. But because of Abraham's faith, that's what made him righteous. Your children walk through the fire because of these false gods. Paul was on the road to Damascus when he met Jesus. And this and, and, and God, when, when he met Jesus on that road, the Bible says how it was a blinded light. And God spoke in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? He was going on the wrong road for a long time, thinking he was doing right. He was imprisoning the saints of God. They call it the way back then. He was taking them and putting them in bondage and committing. He, he also consented to the death of the first deacon, Steve, Stephen. Consented to his death. But Paul said, I did all this in ignorance. I didn't follow the sign. The wise men, they were wise enough to follow the sign to Bethlehem to see where the child Emmanuel would be born. My God, in a stable wrapped up in swallowing clothes. This is what God sent his son into the world, wrapped him up in swallowing clothes and human flesh. God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. God sent his word to heal us, to deliver us. And when Paul was on that road to Damascus, he, he needed the sign. He was blinded. And God told him, to go down to Damascus, continue the road that you're going to. And God spoke to the prophet in Acts 9 11. He told Adonis, and he said, The Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight. That's a sign. There had to be a street called Straight. There had to be a sign there. I don't want to be on a dead end street. I want to be on the straight street and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul Tarshish. For behold, he prayed. He hadn't been praying all this time. But now he's praying. And go lay your hand on him. Receive your sight in the Holy Ghost. This is what Ananias did. The signs of the street called straight. And it would be told you what you ought to do. The right house of God. Where they're not. Where they're not Idol worshiping, where they don't have, where they don't have a form of godliness and deny the power of where they where they are praying, where they are being obedient to God's word. How can this church, they call it church, evangelistical church, follow President Trump? who's been accused with 91 felonies, who just lost a case of $83 million for pulling that lady, Eugene Carroll, name it, dragging her through the dirt, who raped her, and she won $5 million for that, and he continued to perpetrate that lie because he knows that his believers want him to continue to lie, and that's the only way we're going to support you. Liar, liar. Set your pants on fire. How can this so-called Christian believers follow this liar? How can they follow someone that they said, he's the Messiah, he's the one that God sent, you know, to deliver us from us? 
all this evil that's in this land. Let me tell you something, beloveds. Only one thing that can deliver us, and it's not this person that's perpetrating the lies. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, and sin is a reproach to any people. If we stop the lie and go and stand on the truth of God's word, this nation will survive. But if we continue to follow this, these lies and these liars in the House of Representatives, we are going, they're going down a dead end street, and they're going to have to pay for the lies. And let me tell you, Bible says that a liar will not turn in the outside of God. In closing, Elijah he challenged Ahab false prophets, and these were the signs that he said. I want to know what God is really God. If Bill is Bill, we serve Bill. If God and Elohim is God, Jehovah is God, we serve God. The God that can send down fire and consume the sacrifice, that's the God we're going to serve. We have 450 prophets of Baal. They set up their altars. They pour water on the altar. Uh, they set up the altars. They, they, they call on the name of Baal, and Baal didn't answer them. They cut their flesh. They made a fool of themselves. And this was a lot of they pour water on his sacrifice because he had to rebuild the altar. He dug a trench and put water all in the trench. He put stones representing the 12 tribes, 12 tribes of Israel. And he called on Elohim. He called on Jehovah God. God sent the fire down. He consumed the sacrifice. He licked up all the waters in the trench and on the sacrifice on the wood. Consumed the stones. He's a he's a this was the sign that Elohim, Jehovah God, is God of everything. Then the prophets told the people to kill all these false prophets, 450 of them, because they, they're, they're perpetrating, they're giving you lies. We're living in a time there's a spirit of deception that's going into the land. And they're, and they're really flooding the airways through social media. Why do you think they want us to, everybody to have internet? So everybody can hear the lies that they're saying. They're not, they say a lie will travel faster than the truth. By the time the truth will get, the lie have been around the world several times before we know the truth. But I thank God that one day in 1974, Jesus said that thou should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I believe the truth of God's word. I used to be into Islam. It was good for me to know about black empowerment. The black is, is a black Muslim. Empowerment, black accomplishment, you know, with the black panthers and things that I saw. Stokey Carmichael, Angela Davis, you know, all these people, Malcolm X. We, we were into that. But it never changed my heart. I still had lost it in my heart. It wasn't until I accepted Jesus Christ into my life. That the truth of God's love, God, God's word, came to real, came alive in me, and He gave me a new life. I became born again, and I believe that sign. I'm a sign to those that knew me and my sin. My, my maybe just say, Frankie, bad. <laughs> he bad. <laughs> but my Hazel used to say, Frankie's a good boy. I had good in me, and God seen it. So we thank God for the new life. Mary and Elizabeth, they had the sign. You know, when Joseph was thinking about putting Mary away, the sign of the virgin. And Jesus, the Bible says, Matthew 1 21, thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from his sin. The angels named him and told Mary what his responsibility would be. She had every right to disbelieve what the angel was saying because she was a virgin. She used to believe what the, thus saith the Lord. And when Joseph, her husband, realized she was pregnant, he was only a spouse to her. They wasn't basically married yet. Back then when he was a spouse, it was a sign that you are engaged. And she realized he was pregnant, not by him. She thought, he thought about putting her away Probably because she didn't want to embarrass the woman because she would have been stubborn. I guess he really loved her. And how the angel spoke to him while he was while he was in a dream, 
and said, that which is in her is of the Holy Ghost. Fail not to take Mary to be your wife. Bring forth a son. In his name, he's going to be Jesus, the Messiah, to save the people from their sins. And the Bible says that when he woke up, he married her, and he did not touch her until Jesus was born. They had other children after that, James, Elise, and so forth and so on. But he believed in the sign that the angel told him. Now, the Bible says Elizabeth, she had a, 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 a son at her old age. But Zacharias, he didn't believe. He was a priest. He was in the house of God. He didn't believe what Gabriel said. The sign that the sign that the angel gave to him because of his unbelief. You're not going to be able to say a mumbling word until the day the child is born. And you're going to name him. You're going to name him John. JJ, Jesus and John. John was born six months before Jesus. Now, the prophet, the priest had every reason not to believe the angel. The reason being Mary, Elizabeth of old, and Zacharias was old. And Gabriel told him this, I'm the messenger of God. I came here to give you this message. And you're not going to believe. You're going to be, you're going to be mute until the day that this son is born. And when John was born, the family said, name is Zacharias. And Elizabeth said no, because she believed the sign. John was a sign. He was a voice in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. His name won't be called John. James, not Jesus, but his name called John. And when they asked the, when they asked uh, Zacharias, his mouth came open and said, his name going to be called John. And they begin to rejoice in God. These signs shall follow them. That believe. Do you believe? I believe in the word of God. <clears throat> Do you believe? First Corinthians 3 and 6. Paul said, I plan. Apollo, he waters. But God will give you the increase. Paul had to say that because in 3 and 4, he said, for while one said, I'm of this clique, and the other said, I'm of this clique, Paul said, you're carnal. Because neither of you, neither is he that planteth anything, and neither is he that waters. But if God is not in it, it don't mean anything. But God, he's the one that gives the increase. In closing, beloveds, we must learn to follow the plan of God. Follow the road to Damascus. And turn out right on a street called, called Straight. And that road to Damascus is this, beloveds. We talked about it years ago. ago. The road to Romans. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6 and 23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 5 and 8 But God commends his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And Romans 10 and 9 and 10, that if thou confess with thy mouth, Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart men, men unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Then you have the sinner's prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that he died for my sins. I receive him by faith. Lord, thank you for saving my soul. I renounce Satan and all his dealings, and I give my heart and my soul and my mind to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. So we thank God for this word today. This is my second 
the sermon for the new year. Thank God. I pray God today that you had you something from that which we have given you on today. Lord, show me a sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. They used to have a song, Stop, Look, and Listen. Stop, Look, and Listen. Stop, Look, and Listen. He that has an ear, let him hear. Saying to your church today, in Jesus' name. This is Bishop Anderson from New Charlotte Holy Hands Healing Ministry saying, God, we love you, and there's nothing that no one could ever do about it. We thank God for his word today. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, for your word does the upright good in heart. As we give your word out today, God, help us to follow the sign. Help us not to follow the false prophets. And God, keep us in this hour of temptation that has come upon the upon this whole world. Save, set free, heal, and deliver according to the Holy Word. In Christ's name and for His grace we pray. Let the church say, Amen.